Okay, so I get stressed very easily. And usually the things I get stressed about are such non-stressworthy things, like not feeling like I have enough time in the day to do all of my tasks. And I always feel a huge sense of regret when I realize that I've been stressing over things that just did not require stressing over. But sometimes I then get stressed and annoyed at how I reacted to that situation and it all starts over again. And really, when I think about what I was stressing about, I realized that I should actually be really grateful for it. I realized that I literally would not want it any other way. I'm stressing about all these work tasks and getting back to my family and making sure that I do my Quran. And then when I pause, I realized that I really wouldn't change any one of those tasks for anything. And as I was scrolling through my YouTube, I noticed a comment from one of my subscribers recommending me a book called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. Now, like many people, I had heard about this book in passing, but I had never picked it up, never bought it and never read it. And boy, did I need it. So in this book, one of the things that the author mentions is the effects of worry and stress on your physical body. He explains in his book that after speaking to professionals in the medical field, they found that stress and worry can directly cause illnesses such as nervous indigestion, some stomach ulcers, heart disturbances, insomnia, some headaches, and also some types of paralysis. And this is not something that's unknown. The NHS website and countless other resources mention the same effects. In a journal published on the National Library of Medicine, it states, that the initial effect of stress on heart function is usually on the heart rate. The heartbeat will either increase or decrease. The next significant effect of stress on cardiovascular function is blood pressure. This can cause disorders in blood clotting, vascular changes, atherogenesis, all of which can cause subsequent myocardial infarction. I don't even know how many of those words I pronounce correctly, but my, my, Myocardial infarction is otherwise known as a heart attack. But as Muslims, we're constantly warned about stress and worry in classical texts. And Allah tells us to seek help through patience and prayer. And we're given so many other practical examples like understanding that we have full reliance upon Allah and accept his qadr. And to think good of Allah. We even have du'as from the Prophet wasallam, which directly talk about anxiety, stress and worry. And with that in mind, there are so many channels which give great religious advice and knowledge and I just am not knowledgeable enough to be sending out Islamic advice on such a deep topic. But what I will do is tell you four practical tips that I have got from this book that I am trying to put into practice and so far have found them helping me. Now, I am still working on this. I definitely have not found a solution to my stresses and worries but I have found these techniques working and so I wanted to share with me or I want to share with you what's benefited me. All right, let's get into it. Number one, seeing your day as an egg timer. Carnegie explains that when you wake up in the morning and realize all the tasks you have, rather than letting it stress you out, look at your day the same way an egg timer works. When you turn the egg timer, it has all of the sand on the top of the timer and by the end of the time period, all of the sand ends up at the bottom. But how does it get there? one grain of sand at a time through its thin neck in the middle. And just like that, we should look at every single task like every grain of sand. Only one at a time will we eventually get all of our tasks complete or all of our sand to the bottom of that timer. Number two, and this one has really helped me, thinking about all of the diseases that you can get with stress and worrying and telling yourself that whatever you're worrying about is not worth a heart attack. Like I said, this one has helped me the most. Remembering that I could stress myself into a disease very quickly fixes me up. Although in the moment it's hard to tell myself that, but when I do remember to do it, it does work. Number three, ask yourself what the worst possible outcome could be and mentally prepare yourself for it. Usually the worst possible outcome is not that bad and it's definitely manageable. Take the example of stressing over a job interview. The worst case scenario is that you don't get it. And how will you react to that? Well, you'd probably carry on looking for jobs and that's okay. And as Muslims, we accept that to have some benefit in it for us. In fact, if you go really deep and really negative, the worst case scenario could even be that you really struggle to get a job and cover your expenses. And even then, most of us 
would probably be blessed enough to have someone who would take us in and give us a roof over our head while we sort ourselves out. And that is not ideal, but it also is not realistic. And you will survive it, inshallah. Number four, get all of the facts. Let logic defeat this stress. I had a huge stress sesh as recent as yesterday. And when Kareem spoke to me, he mentioned that things really are not that bad and there's really nothing to stress about and it will all get done. And it sounds obvious at the time, but your brain doesn't allow you to think like that. Carnegie suggests that when you go through stress, you answer the following questions. A. What is the problem? B. What are the causes of the problem? C. What are the possible solutions? And D. What is the best solution? So next time you feel super stressed, ask yourself those four questions and hopefully you will fact check your way out of that stress and worry. So those are my four tips, just to go over them again. Number one, seeing your day as an egg timer. Number two, remembering at the time of the stress that this is not worth increasing my chances of a heart attack or shortening my life over. Number three, ask yourself what's the worst possible outcome and prepare for it. And lastly, the four questions that hopefully will help you get the facts straight and logic yourself out of stress. Now, before we go, here is a challenge for you guys. Watch this video again with one other person or send this video to another person. And once you've watched it, tell yourselves or tell each other that you're gonna hold each other accountable for these exact points. That means that if you ever catch each other stressing out unjustifiably, you will remind each other that it is not worth a heart attack. You will help each other get the facts right so you can make each other realize that it's really not that serious and tell them the worst case scenario and why it will be okay. And if you know me personally, I ask that you hold me accountable to these exact four points because stress really is a common occurrence for me and I'm trying to drill it out. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope these points have helped you and please remember to hit subscribe and like the video. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. It helps push out the video to more people. So hopefully we can all benefit together. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.